everybody, and thanks for checking out my update. I wanted to follow up on the review that I did on the IWC Mark 20 when it was first released. Now, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos. I have some great content coming up. Now, for more details on the Mark 20, I did a full detailed review that I'm going to link in the description. A couple of months ago, I reviewed the IWC Mark 20. It had just been silently released, and I loved what it brought to the table over the Mark 18. I've always been a fan of the simplicity and the legibility of the Mark series. They're do-anything and go-anywhere watches. The increased water resistance, power reserve, the thinner case with shorter lug length, amongst other upgrades, had me excited. One feature that I love that watch companies are slowly adopting is the quick-release strap systems. IWC's version is called the Ease Exchange. The execution of that Mark 20 watch I reviewed fell short on my expectations, and I'm going to explain this up front and make it clear that that was the model that I had, and it appears that they fixed it. You typically push a button or slide, release the strap, replace it with the new strap, and you're done. Panerai and Tag Heuer are two of my favorite examples of this. With that Mark 20 that I reviewed, I found that the strap was abnormally tight between the lugs, and when you pulled the strap off to release it, the straps were so tight on the sides that the leather would bump up against the case when pulling it free. A few times when I released it, it ultimately did damage to the leather. So when I brought it back to the authorized dealer, we worked it out, and I came home with a Pilot Chrono 41 on bracelet that I'm going to be reviewing soon. That watch is also equipped with the Ease Exchange, and the lug width is the same 20 millimeters. The straps are interchangeable. I found the Ease Exchange to be much easier to work with on the Pilot Chrono 41, and the straps are not as tight, and there was just enough room to work with in between the lugs. A couple of months later, I got a call from my other IWC dealer, J. Roberts Jewelers, and they had what I wanted from the start, the Mark 20 on bracelet. So I went down, I brought in my Ease Exchange straps, and checked it out. And what I realized quickly at the store when exchanging the straps was that the Ease Exchange was noticeably easier to work with than the first Mark 20 that I had reviewed. So like I said, I had gotten that first one right when the Mark 20 was released. The only thing that I could think is that it had been a manufacturing defect on that first one. I hadn't been reading a lot about people complaining about the same issue with that tightness I experienced, but there were some. So if you're having difficulty changing straps with the Ease Exchange, call your authorized dealer or reach out to IWC directly. Now, I'd like to get into the bracelet. I don't think I've ever seen a manufacturer put so much design and engineering as much as IWC did with this one. First of all, it's so comfortable. I love when watched bracelets drape along the wrist with full flexibility. It reminds me of the Rolex Jubilee and the new 3861 Speedmaster bracelets, but the links are slightly longer and are more curved in. It's a five-piece link. The finish is brushed with polished second and fourth links, and the edges are also polished along the sides. There are no sharp edges anywhere on this bracelet. No pinching, no pulled arm hairs, and the push-button fold-over clasp is thin. There's an incredible amount of engineering put into this bracelet, and I'm really impressed. IWC implemented a unique extension system to micro-adjust the bracelet on the fly. The IWC polished logo is also a functional button. You push it in, and under the clasp, as you can see here, you can extend the bracelet around three quarters of a link length in or out. The beautiful thing about how well they did it is the clasp remains thin and comfortable. The Ease Exchange is also implemented into this bracelet. No spring bar tools are needed. To remove the bracelet, there's a thin slot between the lugs. Using your fingernail, you move the slot down towards the bracelet while pushing and rotating the end link forward towards the top of the watch to unhook and release it from the case. To install it back on, you just line up the end link between the lugs, hook it back in, push it from the top until it locks in. To work with a strap with the Ease Exchange on the Mark 20, you push the button firmly under the strap, unhook it away from the case, and you release it. To install the strap, you just line the strap up between the lugs, hook it in until you hear it snap to lock, and it's very easy to work with. There's also the IWC sizing system. IWC includes a tool in the box, and you can even use a toothpick if you don't have the tool handy. No screwdrivers, poking tools, or hammers are needed, and this sizing system is very secure. Sizing the bracelet does take a little practice, though, and it's a little complicated at first, but once you figure it out, it's easy to work with. You size the bracelet by pushing the tool into the button on just the one side of the link to unlock it, and then you slide it off on and put it to the side. Pull the opposite side out with the bars attached and remove the links. Now here's how you put it back together. You're going to want to arrange the links together almost like a puzzle. 
Insert the bars into the proper holes and push them through all the links until you see the ends of the bars exposed. Place the side link that has the button into the exposed ends of the bars and use the tool to lock it back to secure it. Now if the button is still pushed in, you want to make sure with the tool that it's properly fastened all the way in to lock it. The Mark 20 is a very simple looking watch and when you look closer you will appreciate the fine details and finish put into the excellent design and the engineering behind the scenes. The Mark 20 addressed a lot of complaints customers had with the Mark 18 which is now discontinued. This watch especially with the bracelet is going to check off a lot of boxes people are looking for on a high quality pilot watch. The in-house 32111 caliber movement with 120 hours power reserve has averaged around 2 plus seconds per day accuracy. The 40 millimeters is a sweet spot that works on many wrist sizes, and if it's still a little too large, you could look at the similar 39 millimeter Spitfire, and if it's too small, IWC offers many larger size options as well. So that's my update. I wanted to show this amazing bracelet IWC released with the Mark 20, and I was happy to update about the issue I discussed in the first review that was pretty much just an exception to that watch that I had reviewed. So if you like this review, please click the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of my future videos. Let me know what you think of this watch in the comments section below. Love hearing from you guys. Now you can also find me on Twitter at DougFNJ, and you can find me on WatchYouSeek.com, which also has a great IWC section. Now if you'd like some aftermarket straps, visit VintagerStraps.com. Use discount code DougFNJ for 15% off of your entire order. Also, special thanks to J. Roberts Jewelers. Go to jrobertsjewelers.com. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Be safe and have a great day.